So, question eight. We've got, um, yeah, as I say, we've got one of these slightly weird bits where it feels like it's a little bit unconnected. So, so you have to state a derivative. Okay. Um, so, let's let's just make the language of this a little bit easier for us. I don't know. Let's say that y is e, e to the cos x. Um, this again, it's a kind of it's a, a core three differentiation thing, which, depending on how confident you are, you might want to do with a substitution. You know, when we first did this kind of thing, we did it to substitution. I, I might, I might prefer to think of this in all in one go. As that I, I have this kind of thing of big, big bear, little bear when we do differentiating things, and so. If it's a, a chain rule, if it's a function of a function, we differentiate the whole thing. So, so it's, it's the big bear, which would be e to the something. And if you differentiate e to the something, you always get e to the something. So that bit isn't going to change. So we start with e to the cos x. But then we need to multiply by the, the little bear, the, the bit inside the bracket, which in this case is cos x. And the inside bit that we're, we're multiplying by, um, differentiate cos x, and we get, oh, I can't remember, does it go plus or minus when we differentiate cos x? Um, anybody? Did somebody say because it does? <laughs> <laughs> CD music system, yes, thank you, right. So if we differentiate cos, we get minus sine. So we've got a minus sine x in there. Right, so the answer, when you differentiate it, is minus sine x e to the cos x. Great. Ah. Right, part two. Hence, use integration by parts to find the exact value of that. Uh, this is one of these things, you know, as we, uh, it's, you've been quite good, I think, generally this year. Uh, lots of students come and ask, when they get stuck on questions in core four papers, it, it always happens. And, and quite often, people will come to you with a question that they're stuck on that's part two of a question. And even if it says hence in it, then I've just done part two and, and ignored part one. And this is one of those questions that if you go straight in at part two, it's a bit of a nightmare. You, you just can't work out how to do this at all by part two. <coughs> it's only when you realize that there's, that hence is really important. So what we learnt in part one was that if you differentiate e to the cos x, you get minus sine x e to the cos x. But that also taught us that if you integrate sine x e to the cos x, you get e to the cos x. So that's, that's the important thing. And actually that's the more important thing, the reverse of this. If we integrate sine x e to the cos x, we get e to the cos x. So, as I come to think about, oh dear, as I come to think about doing integration by parts on cos x, sine x, e to the cos x, the x between 0 and pi by 2, I, I'm remembering my integration by parts formula which says it's u dv by dx is u times v minus the integral of v du by dx. I'm trying to think, what, what can I differentiate, what can I integrate with this? Well, the, the hence bit is leading me to think, sine x e to the cos x, I know how to integrate that. So that's the bit I'm going to integrate, that's going to be my dv by dx, is going to be sine x e to the cos x. That's, that's what the hence is suggesting to me, that I know how to integrate sine x e to the cos x, which means that my u bit here is cos x. Now let's let's see where that, that leads us. If I differentiate cos x, I, I won't do it again, I know that this gives us minus sine x. If I integrate sine x e to the cos x, well, I, I can't forget this minus sign here. I know that if I integrate sine x e to the cos x, I get e to the cos x, but it, it changes sign, doesn't it? So if I'm integrating the positive of that, I must get the negative e to the cos x. And, and I'm hoping that when we put this together, 
it, it works out. So my integral is um, it's u divided by this. Again, my my use of maths class have kind of helped help me with this because what we have to do this as well with them um, for the A2 course. And and they they quite like the idea of putting in a little kind of arrow like that when we do integration by parts, just to remind them of, of what they're doing with it. And so it's they talk about it being a, a nose that they're putting in there. So it's it's u times v at the start of it. We've got minus cos x e to the cos x between our limits of zero and something or other. Okay. Five by two. Minus the integral of so there's that one to them. This these two multiply together. And this is going to be positive this time, isn't it? It's minus sine x times minus e to the cos x. So that's minus minus gives me plus sine x e to the cos x dx between 0 and pi by 2. And the, uh, the super exciting thing that's just happened in all of that is that we've ended up integrating sine x e to the cos x. And again, that whole hence thing from part 1, if you integrate sine x e to the cos x, you get e to the cos x. And actually the signs have also worked out here as well, haven't we? Because that's, that's, that's already got the minus that we wanted. So that's plus e to the cos x. And all that's left for us to do is to put our limits in there and tidy it up. But I, that wasn't that a really neat question once you actually worked out which way around to do your integration by parts? Um, and that word hence gave us such a big clue as where we were going with it. It's now just about subbing in these values um, Co uh, cos of pi by 2 is 0, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So if we put that in, we've got 0, e to the 0, plus e to the 0. And if we put 0 in, cos of 0 is 1. So that's minus 1, e to the 1, plus e to the 1. Which is a crazy answer that we end up with. But after all that work, we end up with 1 as being the answer to this interval. That's it. e to the 0 is 1. e minus e plus e is 0, so we can just end up with 1 after all that. And you feel, was it really worth it? But, uh, yeah. Happy? Is that okay? No questions? And that's my